Hello, I have no creativity today and this is Board Deck and Dice. Today we are looking at Honshu, the trick-taking city building game. In Honshu every player will start with a card that has six squares on it. All of these squares will score in a different way at the end of the game. If you're playing standard style then the deserts are worth nothing. These squares give you resources and whenever you reveal one you put them on. The city squares give you one point for every one in each of your in your only in your biggest city. There are lake squares that cannot be covered up and they're worth naught for the first lake, three for the second one next to it and so on. Each one's worth three and then if I can find any there are forest squares which are worth a straight two points each. With the factories if you manage to build a factory later on which has got a star on and if you have both a resource and a factory at the end of the game you can move the resource across to score that many points which is in the flowers. That's with standard scoring. The game comes with eight cards that give you different ways of scoring, allow you to move two resources to a factory for example, change the rules on forests, make deserts worthwhile. There's a variety of cards that you can just use randomly or work your way through for scoring. In Honshu, each player will be dealt a hand of six cards. The cards are very similar to your starting card, as in they all have six squares on them, but they also have a number between one and sixty, a unique number between one and sixty on. Uh, in turn order, you will play one of these cards down. So if I play the 16, that is the level of the trick. Someone else might play a 44, so they'd be winning the trick. Someone else might think, I don't want any of those, I'll play a 43. And the last player might play a 14, but they might play a resource on it, which adds 60. Once a resource is played, that sets the colour for the whole trick. So if a yellow is played, everyone else must play yellow. So in this case, the player who played the 14 would be first place. And you've got some handy cards because they would have uh, 74. The player who played 44 would be second place, third place and fourth place. So in that order, players would choose which card they wanted to add to their city. So the first player might look at, that would be discarded in the game, the first player might look at these and decide that they want to go the lake route. So they would take that away and they would decide where to play this card. Now the rules of playing the card are that you must either cover up a square on the top card, at least one, or one underneath, and you can't cover all of the squares on the card you're playing. Now with this one I'd probably put it there because I've got the uh, three housing squares together, I've got the forest, and then I've got a lake to build on. Also if I still have blue left at the end of the game I can move it over there for uh, three more points. The round carries on like that, after you've played three cards you will hand your cards to the left, you'll play the next three cards, you'll deal out six more cards, uh, then you'll play three, you'll uh, draft them to the right, play the last three and the winner will be the player with the most points. So by the end of the game it might look something like this. As the uh, covering up goes on and on trying to make the best possible score. Uh, you can cover up factories, so you might put that there to get you three points on your lake. Uh, another one there, you're building your big city down here so you don't really care about those. And so on. Obviously the other players are trying to stop you doing that and uh, that in essence is Honshu. So what do I think about Honshu? I really like Honshu, especially strong in the city building area. The, there's only four scoring variations, uh, scoring tiles or squares, so the scoring remains fairly easy, you know what you're doing, you can see what everyone else is doing. Um, I like the fact you get eight more scoring variations that you can play randomly or you can choose one. Um, the trick taking, taking for me, as a fan of trick taking games like Skull King, is the weakest part of the game. But it is made interesting with the use of resources. If you have a game where people do use resources, you can look round and I've got, say uh, this is my hand, I've got a blue and a, a grey here. If I notice that no one else has got a grey and I haven't got a grey factory yet, I can just wang that in to, to definitely win the trick. 
I would have liked to see perhaps a bit more depth in the trick taking than there is, but currently I say I say quick uh, city building game with a trick taking element. I this has really really gone down well for me and the people I've played it with. Is Honshu intimidating? It's not unintimidating. It's not bottom layer. There are some. Uh, icons to get used to, people tend to confuse the um, resource pictures especially, but there is a cheat card and once you understand that you're, you're away. The rules are really good, really clear, really short and nice and the game is a lot of fun. Honshu from me gets a big thumbs up. I like this game uh, despite the trick taking elements but I think it's still worthy of a place in my collection. I have lacked creativity today, this has been Honshu, and we will see you next time on Board, Deck and Dice. Thanks for watching.